Just because someone doesn't fit your definition of fit doesn't always mean that they're not. Interestingly enough, the image itself is really positive. Somebody who's obese attempting to work out, attempting to lose weight. But we all know that's not what you mean. You just want to be able to tell people that you're fit while you're 200 to 300 pounds and have them believe you. That's what you want. You want people to believe your lies. <laughs> Phobia dates all the way back to the transatlantic slave trade, when colonizers, white people, invaded Africa. They found that black people were too big, too curvy, and too sensuous. Even though at the time there were white women in France who were also curvy and seen as ideal, it was only when they discovered this was too occurring among Africans that it became a problem. Are you done? Are you done writing your fan fiction? This makes so little sense. It's like they're combining multiple different historical events to justify, I don't know, being obese. It's insanely strange because it immediately falls apart as soon as you give it a little bit of thought. One, why are slave traders concerned with curvy Africans? Last time I checked, most African slaves sold through the Atlantic slave trade were African men of average to above average build. So for a slave trader to be concerned with curvy Africans wouldn't make any sense in that context. And the weirdest thing about all of this, according to you, with no sources or reasoning, white people in France, one nation I guess, in the entire European continent, found curvy women to be attractive or the ideal. And as soon as they just discovered the African woman, all of a sudden they changed their opinion. Like, oh, whoa, whoa, uh, black people can be curvy? That's strange. I guess white women shouldn't be curvy either because black women are curvy and that's bad. What type of reasoning is that? And where does that even come from? I've never heard of this historical event ever. So it sounds like you just came up with it. I don't know who needs to hear this, but being mindful about what you eat doesn't mean you have an unhealthy relationship with food. It's sad that we have to literally shout common sense at the top of our lungs, because as a society we are so far gone, and we would rather lie to ourselves and to others in order for people to feel good about themselves, instead of being honest and bettering ourselves. But hey, I guess this tweet is some sort of sign of progress. Fat privilege is being born in a place and time where food is so abundant that you can gorge yourself while others starve, all while complaining of the social inconveniences that you suffer as a consequence of your own choices. If someone has issues managing their finances, no one mocks that person for setting a budget and monitoring their spending. No one says, just spend in a way that feels natural, into it what it feels like you need to spend. If you get into debt, even serious debt, lesson learned, and you can work your way back out. But that's often the message given to people struggling with food intake habits by those promoting intuitive eating. Sometimes we need guidance and structure. No true words have been said, but the unfortunate fact is that there's no incentive to do that. If you try to encourage people to lose weight properly, establish principles that promote wellness and health, you will be called a fat phobe and people will try to cancel you. Because the current narrative is that fatness and obesity is positive and something to be promoted. If we want more people to become healthy and live better lives, you're going to have to risk losing your job, your social standing, your friends, all of it, just so that you can preserve your principles. And for a lot of people, it's just not that deep for them. So they just rather go with the flow and let the world fall apart. I once joined a body positivity group on Discord, and after lurking for a while, I decided to ask them, you know, how bad my self-harm scars were? They're on my thighs, and they're still visible. Other people tell me that they're not as bad, but I think they're, they're terrible. Anyways, I asked them to be brutally honest, and all they did was yell, and it was a VC, and insult me because I'm a really small guy, 5'3 and 332.27 pounds. They told me I have no place in body positivity with my anorexic ass. I used to be anorexic, but I've been gradually gaining weight, and now I'm at a healthy weight. But dang, some people in their body positivity is really just being positive about their own body. If the people who are listening right now could take one thing away from all of these fat logic videos, it should be this. These people hide behind the veil of positivity in order to elevate their own self-esteems. They're more than willing to rip you to shreds and tear you down just so that they can get a crumb of self-respect and self-esteem. 
most of these people are bad people. They don't care about others. They don't give a fuck about how you feel. They're more than willing to lie and hurt you in order to feel better about themselves. And now that they have a little bit of political power, a little bit of political clout, they're more than willing to cast that net across the entire nation to make sure that they feel good. That's the takeaway. These people are terrible people. Didn't you say that you liked her because she was a vegan? I mean, that's one factor that we have in common. It's nice to talk to someone who shares my love for animals, right? How's that a thing? It's disgusting that you only date skinny girls. I thought you'd understand how scuffed that is as a lesbian. Uh, excuse me, uh, I, I don't really see the connection here. Why did you put lesbian in quotations? Because someone who experienced homophobia would know how plus-sized individuals suffer in the same way that you do, if not worse. Please don't compare being overweight to being gay. I mean, for starters, being fat is a choice. I can't exercise my gay away. They're not the same. I don't care. Being fat is not a choice. I was born this way too. Word? Because most babies are like 8 to 12 pounds. <laughs> you are not gay. Discussion over. Well, you heard it here first. If you're a part of the alphabet crew, specifically lesbian, and you don't want to have sex with fat women, Congratulations, you're no longer gay. Welcome to the straight world. We, we got some cardigans for you. Stitch this with the most disgusting thing that's happened to you while working. So when you get admitted into the ICU, we do, you know, a head to toe bath. We need to clean you up, do our head to toe assessment to see if you have any skin problems, etc. So we're bathing this lady, a rather large lady, may I add, and she had multiple skin folds. So we're like bathing her and she smells rancid, rancid. I'm like, ma'am, when's the last time we had a bath? She's like, it's been quite a while. I'm like, yeah, I can tell. Woo. So we like lift up a fold to like get underneath there. There is a dead frog in her fold, a decaying frog. I'm like, ma'am, you have a decaying frog underneath your, your skin folds. She's like, oh, that's Bernie. I wonder, I wondered where he went. She had frogs for pets in her house, and one of them was in her fold and was decaying. I remember a time when Cosmopolitan had attractive women on its covers. Now it's just delusion and social justice politics. What a shame. My cat, one week before it died of heart disease, was such a cute chonker. Oh, why aren't these people in prison? This should be a crime. I, I'm sure it actually is a crime, because this is abuse. You essentially killed your cat for Reddit karma and emojis. You sick piece of shit. My fitness pal has to be the most fat phobic app to ever exist. It perpetuates diet culture. Why is it even allowed in the app store when tracking your food is an obvious gateway into eating disorders? Oh my goodness, these guys have one class, one psychology 101 class, and they think that they can diagnose people with eating disorders, especially if they have the audacity to calorie count or use apps to diet. It's ironic that these guys are so concerned with eating disorders when they have eating disorders themselves. They overeat. These people are so hyper-concerned about how the world views them for their bad choices instead of just making good choices. I don't understand. It just it makes no sense to me. I never seen anybody get so upset over a fitness app. Jesus, get a grip. So here's Brooklyn's post. As usual, comments, stitches, and duets are disabled, so I just gotta do it myself. Her caption here says, all bodies are beautiful, period. This shouldn't be a debate, and I will continue to always talk about this despite the silly internet trolls. Yeah, but not all bodies will kill you at like 35. And here's a story. This is one of my lifelong friends. This was from like years ago. And there's another. And here's his most recent. It is not puberty that he lost that much weight. Trust me, he can lose it and gain it back. The man's literally knew he was going to fucking die late 20s if he didn't do something. So me and all the other boys literally told him, yo, bro, don't be content with that. Work out, eat healthy, and now here he is booming. If you are content and you lie to people and you say, oh, your body's beautiful, you don't need to change a thing, when they need to to live a healthy life, you're a piece of shit. I'm just an Italian-American mad at diet culture. Eating healthy and not weighing 400 kilograms is not diet culture. <laughs> sure is. 
Yeah, sure is a lot of delusion with you. You're crazy. You weigh 400 kilograms. That's like 881 pounds. Frankly, it's a miracle that you're fucking alive. I'm so angry at myself for buying into the health at any size movement. It's been a year and a half long binge encouraged by intuitive eating and I've gained 100 pounds in that time. Intuitive eating tells you to eat with no restrictions and promises that binging will stop. Well, that didn't happen and now I weigh more than I ever have. I'm sorry, I'm just angry and I don't know what to do. They've brainwashed me saying that diets never work and now I genuinely don't know what to do. Well, you can always start with a friend or a family member who can commit to going to the gym with you, jogging with you, managing your diet, and if you can't find a friend, you can always find a dietitian willing to help you out. It's going to be expensive because, you know, it's a professional, but there are solutions. You're not alone in this. You can definitely find a way out of this mess. Like I said before, these people are awful. They're willing to go at any lengths to feel good about themselves. They ruined this guy's life just to feel good about themselves. Are fitness diet people actually happy? From everything I've read and all the research I've done, intuitive eating and health at every size, so far I've come to the conclusion that dieting is bad 99% of the time and often it can result in weight gain and other bad things. I've also heard a lot of people say that forcing yourself to exercise when you don't want to and over-exercising can be very harmful. I have a lot of fitness friends who are into fitness and all they follow is fitness people. All of the fitness YouTubers and influencers I see are always smiling and showing off their healthy food and stuff. I know it's social media, but it always seems like they're happy. And so do my friends. Are they actually happy while dieting and exercising so hard every day? I thought diets caused so many bad things. I'm really confused. Thanks. Sounds like you're experiencing a little bit of cognitive dissonance as a result of your one-sided research. Take what you see on social media with a grain of salt, but understand one thing, that exercise and wellness building does promote happiness. I and many others can attest to the positivity of working out. Doing a couple of push-ups, sit-ups, and jogging on occasion really promotes your mental health. Your brain is aware that you're doing a positive activity and is rewarding you with dopamine and really good feeling chemicals. All of that makes for a better life, trust me. You want to really stop feeling sad for yourself all the time? Straight up, do a push-up. Do a little bit of a workout set, and you're going to realize how quickly you become happy. And yes, you're right to be, you know, skeptical of what you see on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. A lot of people will ham it up to sell you something. But most people will agree with me and say that working out and promoting a good diet makes you happy. <coughs> oh, hello, hello, hello. Bro, this video is them rubbing cream on the rashes of their overweight kid. It's abuse. It's abuse. You're abusing your child. Like, there's no way that your kid would be that big unless you're overfeeding him. Before anybody goes, it's just a medical condition. First of all, shut the fuck up. Second of all, right down here, losing weight at four months is not easy. Don't knock it the fuck off. Stop with your overly political correct bullshit. Realize that this baby is fucked because of shitty parenting. Your tummy is supposed to stick out. That's where your organs go. It isn't fat, especially if you're a person with a uterus. It pokes out in front of your abdomen and makes it poke out a bit. Cap, you're trying to tell me all of this is uterus? All of this is organs and uterus. You're not fooling anyone. Thin person trying to justify someone else's work to justify her opinion on fat people? Fat person here, my body maintains at 800 calories a day. This includes me jogging 3 miles a day and using a bike. I'm so healthy, as in no other health conditions. None. My body does not burn calories like others. This is a medical fact, as I've been seeing specialists. You know why? Because I'm genetically superior to you. Yes, my body is made to survive, so stop spewing your uneducated opinion as fact. That's ironic. You say that you're genetically superior because you don't burn calories as fast as other people. So you're assuming that eating a lot of food and then not burning that energy is a positive thing. Let's apply that logic to other things like a car. It's like filling up a car, full tank of gas, but the car can only go 10 miles per hour. Oh, but you only have to refill the car every 200 miles. You see what I'm getting at? There's other cars that use fuel faster, but as a result, the car gets the driver to the destination faster. Just because you can eat more, gain more weight, and burn less calories doesn't make you the apex predator, doesn't make you the best at surviving. People who can utilize the full potential of their energy will always be stronger and more agile than you. 
unless you're a toddler, you should be eating more than 1200 calories on a daily basis. Intuitive eating for life. Yes, I'm just shocked and offended that someone thinks 185 pounds is a weight that necessitates losing 50 pounds. Fuck off with that. Do you understand why you need to lose 50 pounds or do you just not care? I'm betting that you don't care because if you did, you would have to come to grips with the fact that you are obese and the only way for you to be healthy at a weight of 185 pounds, you'd have to be 6 feet or taller. As a 185 pound person, for you to just not be obese, you need to lose 35 pounds. Losing 50 pounds puts you barely within the healthy range. And this is just straight from the universal BMI chart. The same thing that a dietitian or any other doctor would point at to explain to you why you need to lose 50 pounds. This may be my firmest held conviction and I want to scream it very loudly so people who find it intolerable know sooner than later. I was 220 pounds at the age of 24 and all of it was on a 5 foot 1 frame and it was fucking awful. I didn't get there because of a fat phobic society, I got there because I used food as a mood stabilizer, which ended up in me consuming more calories than I expended, which is what causes weight gain. This is a personal issue I'll deal with lifelong. This is a common issue and for some absolutely bonkers reason we have now decided that overeating and weight gain is a result of restriction and the advice is to eat whatever? Oh my god, it, please help me create a world where addictive food isn't a button click away from my doorstep. Like Americans didn't just genetically evolve in the last 100 years to become obese as a natural set point. It's environmental, in large part to do with food, and it's one of the most infuriating parts of American consumer capitalism. Fat phobia sucks, but being 24 with a CPAP machine and diagnosis of a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease sucks more. I don't want a bikini, I want a world without hyper palatable foods. I'll still derive pleasure from foods without excess of oil and sugar. What's more pleasurable than food is sleeping a full night without a CPAP machine and not having heart palpitations after eating. Having anorexia is an excuse to perpetuate fat phobia. Seriously? You're, you're saying that somebody who deals with anorexia should just keep to themselves and not share their stories online because it uh, perpetuates fat phobia. Is that what you're saying? You went out of your way to tweet this like people would like you, like people would agree with you. I'm, I'm even certain that people within your own deplorable health at every size community would say that this is is a very terrible statement to make. Whoever censored your profile picture and at did you a service. A courtesy that you do not deserve, but you know, people are nicer than me. They have pity on those who make idiotic, midwit statements. It will be poetic for you to die an early death because of your obesity, but I'm not gonna wish that upon you because I'm not a terrible person. I know how bad obesity can be. And I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I hope somehow you see the light and you realize how just deep in the bullshit you are. Hopefully one day you come to realize that the very community you align yourself with is out to destroy your life. And to convince you that those who suffer from anorexia are actively going out of their way to disparage you and be mean to you and being fat phobic towards you. The people who write stuff like this are so transparent. And I've said that in the past in multiple videos that I've made about fat logic. These people are broken and they're just looking for an outlet. And instead of looking inward, they'd rather be a coward and punch down on people who already are suffering. What's up everyone? It's your boy Aleris aka Panda Daddy and I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did let me know in the comments down below and leave a like if you liked the video and if you're new to my channel go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. It's finally spring break and I have nothing but time and nothing but content to give you this week. I'm uploading today, tomorrow. And for the rest of the week, I know you guys have been waiting for a lot of content. That's why I took last week, you know, to just make sure this is perfect. Just so enjoyable. Everything you want on every day of this week. And I wouldn't be able to do it without the Patreon supporters. So thank you to Donovan, Brett, Mina the Swift, Esau, Izuku, Darth Vader 12, Destroyer, Trey, Muffy Lou Who, Noah, Vermont, Ethan, John Robinson, Eva, Catherine Taylor, Arjun, Hannah, Keith. 
Will Billy, Dustin, and Hostmar. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there is two links in the description. One to my Patreon and one to my merch store. Both ones go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.